Welcome to my lecture online. In this video, we're going to take a look at what we call the natural flow with friction. In other words, we have a supply tank and a reservoir. Let's say water is flowing from the supply tank down the reservoir, down a pipe that is at an incline. So we expect water to flow downward. But what is the velocity of the water by the time it gets to the bottom here where it flows into the reservoir? <clears throat> well, normally, if friction is not taken into account, we know that the velocity will be the square root of 2gh, where the h is the difference in height from where the source is to where the ultimate reservoir is. So simply, it would be the square root of 2gh is what we would normally get out of the Bernoulli's equation. But in this case, we're including friction. So we know that the friction is going to be a drag on the flow, and so the water is going to come out at a lower velocity. So how do we determine what that velocity is? Well, first of all, at the top, at the supply tank, the diameter of the pipe should be relatively small compared to the size of the supply tank in such a way that the velocity at the top starts at zero. And we can also say, since the supply tank is open to the atmosphere, that pressure one is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Let's assume that the height reference is at the bottom of the pipe here, so that H2 is zero, and H1 is simply the, the height from the end of the pipe to where the pipe starts. On the reservoir side, we can also say that P2 is open, open that the uh, reservoir is open to the atmosphere, so P2 is equal to atmospheric pressure, and V2 is what we're trying to figure out. So that's the unknown that we're looking for. Now, since both P1 and P2 are equal to the atmospheric pressure, we can simply cancel that from both sides of Bernoulli's equation. So here we have Bernoulli's equation, the three terms equals the three terms, plus we have this term right here, which is the what we call the uh, frictional head loss times the density times G. This is the pressure term that is equal to the pressure term over here in, in, um, <clears throat> in likeness. In other words, this is really a height difference. In other words, if there was no friction, the amount of velocity would be caused by the entire height. But since there's friction, we're going to lose some height. We can call this fictitious height. We call that the frictional head loss. And so it really appears as if the water flows from a tank that starts at this height rather than this height. So that's what the friction actually does to the situation. It makes it seem as if the water comes from a lower position instead of from over here. And that's what the frictional drag does on the flow of the water. The velocity of the water here will be as if the tank was down here instead of up there. And that's how we're going to handle it. So that is where this additional term plays a role. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of the pressure on both sides because they're equal. Then we realize the velocity at the top is equal to zero and the height at the bottom is equal to zero. If we then keep the remaining terms, we just have three of them, it'll be GH1. Oh, and by the way, then once we do that, we can, we can get rid of the density from all the terms. So what we have left is then the GH1 plus one half V2 squared plus the frictional head loss times G. If we then solve that equation for V2, we have one half V2 squared is equal to GH1, and then bring this term across becomes minus frictional head loss times G. And then we take the two across, we have two, we factor out a G, two times G times the difference of the height, H1, minus the frictional head loss, that's this head loss right there. And then if we take the square root of both sides, notice instead of having the normal velocity being equal to the square root of 2GH, it's going to be the square root of the 2G times H1 minus the frictional head loss quantity. And of course, that amount is in meters as well. And so that's why we have that reduced velocity. Remember that the frictional head loss can be found by using this equation. And I probably should have used small h instead of big H. That's the normal thing of doing. So let's make that a small h right here. There, that's a little bit better. So the frictional head loss can be calculated by hopefully by now, our familiar equation. So that's equation number one. Notice we have equation one up there. Yes, on the next video, we're going to show you a different result, a different equation to calculate the velocity at the bottom and try to make some sense out of it because we're going to relate the results based upon what the value of the frictional head loss could be. So anyway, there we go. Equation number one, 
That's how we find the velocity of what we call natural flow of water, not being pumped down, but using the force of gravity and considering the friction force. And that's how with Bernoulli's equation, things change a little bit. And that is how it's done.